testosterone replacement therapy or TRT. What is it? Is it good for you? Is it bad for you? What does my blood work say? I want to talk to the clinic director and the prescribing doctor to see my exact protocol and if you should or should not take testosterone, whether you're a male or female. Let's check it out. Dr. Adderhard does want to start you on a program. He said, um, looking at this, you're 356, mm -hmm. you know, and the range goes basically 264 to 915. So lower end. So what would be, so uh, 900 plus would be what I'm going for, right? Top range, yeah, 900-ish. Okay, and then what? what's like a 60 or 70 year old? So I like average 60 or 70? 300-ish. Oh, okay, so <laughs> Depending, I mean, okay. it could, it, there's no, definitive for each age group. Yeah. You know, I'll have 60 year olds come in and be surprised that they're at four or 500. That's rare. Usually 60 year olds are about 400, 300, 200, somewhere in that range. Okay, so I'm at 300. I've been low for a long time, so I've had this checked, but. Uh, 300's lower end for a 40 year old. Yeah, sure. especially if somebody's works out a lot. Yeah. But now if we're, for, if we're gonna go on TRT, like what's that gonna look like as far as like a protocol is concerned? So after the doc reviews the blood, he puts you on a program. It typically is testosterone, um, something to support the testicles like HCG, uh -huh. and if you need it, an estrogen blocker like a Nazrazol. Okay. So you would take the different medications on different days. Testosterone is typically your first day. Some people split the dose into day one and four. The uh, Nazrazol we usually do after the testosterone and the HCG after the testosterone as well, a couple days a week. Okay, so the anastrozole, it, that's um, it's an estrogen blocker. Can you explain right. what, what that does? So testosterone naturally converts, it's called aromatization, into estrogen. Mm -hmm. So the doc prescribes medications in those individuals that do aromatize or convert their testosterone into estrogen mm -hmm. to block that aromatization. So anastrozole is an effective estrogen blocker. So if you start, let's say, with your estrogen is at 11, not on testosterone. So that's actually a lower end estrogen. Uh, you want your estrogen between 7.6 and 42 on here. We like our guys 25 to 30. Okay. So in your case, you might not start with a blocker. The doctor won't start you with a blocker right. and we'll see where that goes. And if you get to 25 or 30, you will never take the blocker. But if you go above 42 into 50, 60 range, he'll put you on a blocker to kind of keep you at that 25 to 30 range. Okay, and how often should blood work be done? We do a blood work on every patient initially, uh, and then basically at uh, about two months after your program to see where you're at, and then we do it every three to six months after that. Okay, so like, once I start this protocol, like once a week with the testosterone and doing uh, the anastrozole and in the kind of day six and seven um, to kind of get my boys back going. The, the HCG day six and seven. Okay. Yeah. So when I'm, when I'm doing that, what, how long do you start seeing results? Like if I'm going from 300 to higher end, like 900, what can be expected from doing that? Uh, increased energy levels, increased sex drive, increased performance at the gym, ability to put on muscle, recovery. It really helps with everything like as if you were, you know, like a 25 year old man, you can recover like when you were in your 20s, you can build muscle like you're in your 20s, you can perform sexually like you're in your 20s. That's, that's fine with me too, yeah. <laughs> so you feel better yeah. overall, you have energy, sex drive, uh, you can put on muscle, take off fat. Now, with, with, is there any, like, what are the contraindications? Like, people say, like, testosterone. I think they think steroids right away. Like, one, what, what's the difference between, two-part two question, the difference between, like, TRT and getting on anabolic steroids, and what are the negative effects, if any, from, you know, getting on TRT? The, good question. So there's different steroids, obviously, available. There's legal ones and illegal ones. Now, testosterone is obviously a naturally occurring steroid in your body that in your case, you're on the lower end of normal that you want to get to the upper end of normal. So we're supplementing that with a testosterone replacement. We're replacing what you don't have mm -hmm. with testosterone. The side effects that we're always looking out for is we start every patient with a, as you, you, you can see on your blood test here, we, we do a full panel on people to make sure that they're healthy overall. We don't just test the hormones. So obviously we're doing your testosterone free in total, your estrogen, mm -hmm and uh, luteinizing hormone among other hormones that we check. 
but we also test uh, your blood cells. We do a CBC, we do your blood chemistries, we do a CMP14, we do your thyroid, we do your cholesterol. So we test pretty much your prostate. So we check all the things in your body, all your systems in your body, make sure you're healthy overall. Yep. In doing so, we can monitor that. So if anything changes on testosterone, we can monitor that and make changes. Okay. The things that we look for that you're specifically asking about, typically we look for changes in red blood cell count, hemoglobin, and hematocrit. It's not frequent, but some individuals can have an increase in hematocrit while on testosterone. If that's the case, we send you for a therapeutic blood draw and lower your dose. That's why it's very important to do follow-up blood tests. We also check PSAs, uh, which is prosthetic specific antigen, to make sure that the prostate's healthy overall. If you have a high PSA, we won't even start you. Testosterone doesn't cause prostate cancer, but it could stimulate the, test, uh, the uh, prostate, and you wouldn't want to take testosterone if you have prostate cancer. Okay. So we're very diligent about checking prostate, hemoglobin, hematocrit, red blood cells, those are some of the things you want to be aware of when on testosterone. Okay, and then like, so this is gonna be a testosterone cypionate. So mm -hmm. if, if I'm like within my higher end range, like if somebody that's like taking steroids, they're gonna be what, like three, four times the amount? Is that- People on steroids, it's a completely different animal. That's why when people come in here asking questions, mm -hmm. it's just comparing apples to oranges. People on anabolic steroids, it's, they use slang terms that I don't even like to get into in medical, but they take a lot of it and then they go off it. They, they're cycling it. They're That's cycling. what a cycle is. Yeah. You're never gonna be cycling it when you come to our practice. He, the doctor would never cycle you on a steroid. Yeah. It's taking a small amount, the smallest amount possible to get you to your upper normal limits. Mm -hmm. You're not basically blasting your body and then going sure. off of it. Okay, and then, so uh, I'm sorry, let's say I start day one today. Mm -hmm. How soon do you start kind of feeling and seeing results? Your blood will go up immediately. Your blood levels of testosterone will go up immediately. In other words, if you start, let's say with a two, 300 level, and then we blood test you the following week, a few days after your testosterone shot, you'll be at a higher level. So it's in your blood serum immediately. Yeah. People start feeling the results in typically four to six weeks. Body changes obviously take a little bit longer. Yeah. They're predicated on diet and exercise, so, feeling a little bit more energetic, increase in sex drive, that happens pretty quickly within four to six weeks and okay. body changes shortly after that. Okay, now what about like, uh, so one, you said you don't cycle people on this, so one, can I stay on this forever? And two, what happens when I get off of it? And I guess for, you know, follow up with that, like what happens to like fertility? Should I be con some concerned about that? Uh, those are good questions as well. So our patients typically stay on the program. It's not a testosterone, boosting it and then staying there once you've taken testosterone. When you go off testosterone, you're gonna go back to the levels you were originally. Obviously, if you've been on it for three years, you're three years older, so you might not have the same levels that you had when you started. Okay. We provide, as I said, testicular support to prevent your body from shutting down. Most guys, uh, if they do decide to go off, it will stay on HCG, sometimes take clomiphene for a few months as well to get them back Kind of to like their kick starts it exactly okay. to, kick, to kick start them back to their original levels. Dr. Adahar likes to provide uh, prescribe HCG and clomid in those cases. Okay. So it is a program that you would stay on to keep yourself at an upper normal level. If you go off it, you will not stay at that upper normal level. As far as fertility is concerned, again, HCG is a fertility drug that is taken if you decide to go off it. And guys that are planning on having children in the near future, we don't recommend getting on it because yeah. it can lower fertility while you're on it. Okay, so that makes sense. So if you're thinking about having a kid right now, probably not get on if it. Think, we tell everybody that yeah. if you're coming in, that's one of the questions we ask during the history, Dr. Adder has says, are you planning on having children anytime yeah. soon? If you're planning on having children in the near future, it's not something you would get on now, it's yeah. something you get on after. Or at least go you know, freeze your boys. You could do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to starting this. I'm gonna do a bodybuilding competition. So what, what, what is you, I've got about 11 weeks. So I'm at 300, where do you think I'd be at, right? You know, uh, 300 total testosterone right now, about 210 pounds. I'm gonna hit it pretty hard. Like you see, you think I'm gonna have a dramatic difference? A, you'll have a dramatic difference. Okay. I mean, it's again, bodybuilding is all diet and exercise. So if you're doing what you're supposed to do and you're yeah. a celebrity trainer, Which so you, you know you, what to you do. Know, you know I will yeah, be. Yeah, so you're gonna go heavy, you're gonna put on muscle and then you're gonna cut up. You're gonna be able to do it more effectively with higher testosterone levels and lower testosterone levels. All right. Market, markedly, okay. a market difference. Okay, so this is a men's clinic, but you also see females, correct? Yeah, Dr. Hyderhar is uh, 
proficient in treating both men and women. So women have their hormones administered a different way than men. Now men could have it administered three ways, injections, pellets and creams, mm -hmm. three main ways. We don't deal a lot with creams unless they're requested. Dr. Adar feels the efficacy of creams. They don't work as well as the injections and the pellets. Yeah. The pellets look like little Tic Tac sized medications that are inserted into the fat in the rear end and they time release. So in men, they time release for six months and in women, three months. So women that go on hormones you typically get pellets yeah. or creams work okay for women, but they typically get uh, pellets. Okay. Pellets, like is, is there a positive reason for using pellets versus, you know, just injections? Dr. Adder likes to use pellets for women. They time release, women get a great response from pellets. Men get a great response too, but they last longer in men than women. So men pellet for six months, women pellet for three months. Okay. At the end of a pellet cycle for a man, when you see it on blood, you are tailing off a little bit after the uh, you know the fifth and sixth month. That's mm -hmm. the only detriment, and you can't do injections at that point, so right. you're feeling a little bit less of the effect, but it's it's minimal. So okay. pellets are super convenient for men that want to travel, not want to deal with injections, don't want to self inject. Yeah. Doctor Adarhar will prescribe pellets. Women, it's easy. It's three months. They last pretty long in the body for women, and it's just a, a no-brainer for women. We also do the peptides for both both men and women as well, yeah. which increase IGF-1 and give a good HGH burst in the body. Okay, now why would a woman want to be on testosterone? Because I know like there are people are going to see this and be like, oh my god, I, testosterone, I thought that was a male hormone. In both men and women, the hormone exists in both men and women, and in women it governs sex drive and uh, the same things as men. Sex drive, muscle tone, energy, so yeah, our women get a great response when Dr. Adder pellets done. Perfect. Thanks, Doc. All right. Nice to meet you. All right, Doc. So blood work, everything. I'm, I'm going to be taking this at home. I'm not coming into the clinic, right? Correct. So what will happen is uh, at your house, you're going to get a box from your DS. Inside's everything you need. The testosterone comes in a brown vial that looks like this. Okay. okay. You also get a syringe with two types of needles. You get a thick needle, which is already attached, and a thin needle to inject so it doesn't hurt. So you take the thick needle, and you would draw out uh, 0.75 ml, which are starting middle dose for all guys. Okay. You remove this thick needle, okay, you put the thin needle on, and then you would inject it directly into the uh, into the side of the buttocks around the pocket area. Okay. You could also do the thigh, you could do the shoulder as well, and you'd like to alternate sides. So it's kind of like, just like pocket? Correct, like I usually tell guys that around the, the corner of the pants pocket, anywhere in a circle around this area is totally fine. Okay. You just want to stay away from the middle because there is nerves there. Okay. So anywhere in the side is totally It's nothing really to worry about in there? Not at all. Okay, cool. You also be, will be taking an estrogen blocker, okay, and that's a pill, so that's easy. Okay. The third medication we use is called gonadotropin, which is a testicle stimulator. The job of your testicles is to make testosterone. But when your testicles see somebody else doing their job, like an injection, they yeah. get lazy because they don't do anything. So I want to shrink up? Exactly. Okay. Just like your muscles, you don't use it, they shrink. Same thing with your testicles. So um, there's this medication called gonadotropin. It'll be delivered as a powder. Okay. You have to turn this into a liquid to inject it. So you will get an empty syringe that looks like this, as well as a bottle of sterile water. <clears throat> you'll remove uh, five mLs from here, okay? And you inject it into this powder like this, okay? which turns it into a solution. You will have a series of these insulin syringes. You withdraw 25 units from here, like that, and then you would basically pinch your love handle, push and inject. Okay. So that's how this one So it just doesn't really matter anywhere, it's gonna go, go to the fat? Yes, theoretically anywhere you could pinch, but most people it's just easy to do it in the flanks. Okay. Why does the testosterone have to go in the muscle versus like an insulin needle? It can, but uh, number one, it's just uh, the absorption is better. Okay. Uh, number one, number two, subcutaneous injection of testosterone does work. Research shows that. However, there is an increased incidence of infections because uh, it's an oil-based medication. It'll just sit in the fatty layer, and especially uh, bacteria love to eat this stuff because it's like a grapeseed oil. Oh, okay. And so the incidence of infections are higher. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay away from that then. All right, cool. Thanks, Doc. All right, my pleasure. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Joey Thurman. Subscribe to this channel and make sure you get my book, The Minimum Method, the least you can do to be a stronger, healthier, happier you.